Welcome to Nightline. Scott and I are glad to be here with you for another Amen. Nightline Amen. program. We are just thrilled to have you with us. So please don't go anywhere. We have a lot of things that are going to be going on for this next hour, and we hope that you'll stay with us. Our guest tonight is Reverend Michael Hodge, Senior Pastor of Locust Hill Baptist Church in Traveler's Rest. And Doug Allen, also from Locust Hill, will be singing for us throughout the program. Our prayer partners are here, and you can give them a call at 864-244-1616, or you can go online at WGGS16.com. Um, so we just hope that you'll stay with us and that you'll enjoy the program tonight. We've just prayed and asked God to bless us and to bless you. Amen. We're going to start off with Doug Allen singing More Than Enough. Jehovah Jireh, my Jehovah Rapha, you're my healer, by your stripes I have been saved. Jehovah Shema, you are with me, you supply. So much. 
much more than enough. You're more than enough for me. Thank you, Doug, for that beautiful song. He is more than enough. Our scripture tonight comes from 2 Peter 3, verses 9 and 10. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, as a thief in the night. The Bible tells us that people will mock and they'll say, Jesus is not going to come. It's been all these years and he hasn't come yet. He's not going to come. And they'll mock. But they're wrong That's because true. Jesus Amen. will come. Jesus isn't just delaying his coming because there's been some glitch that he's got to get fixed before he can do it. Absolutely not. There is nothing or no one who can keep Jesus from keeping his promise. The scripture tells us exactly why he hasn't come back. He's giving more time for others to come into the kingdom of God. He doesn't want anybody to perish and spend eternity in hell. But he won't wait forever. Maybe you're one of them he's waiting for. I'm telling you, he won't wait forever. There is a time that only God knows, and that's when Jesus Christ is coming back. That's right. We have been warned over and over and over, but when he comes, the scripture says it'll be the twinkling of an eye, and it'll, he'll be here and, and gone. No time to change your mind. No time to do the things that you wish you had already done. So if you haven't repented of your sins, if you haven't received cleansing through the blood of Jesus Christ and surrendered your life to him, please do it now. Do it before tonight's over, okay. before this That's program's right. over. Jesus is coming mm -hmm. like a thief in the night. Doug Allen is going to sing for us again, and this song is called Evermore. Evermore I'll bow before you. I will bless your name forevermore. Evermore I will love you. Evermore I will serve you. Evermore I will glorify the name of the Lord. Evermore I'll adore you. Evermore I'll bow before you. I will bless your name forevermore. Evermore I will love you. Evermore I will serve you. Evermore I will glorify the name of the Lord. Evermore you evermore I'll bow before you I will bless your name forevermore you alone I glorify and 
of your goodness testify your banner i will lift on high forever and ever and when my life on earth is done and when my battles have been won i'll sing your praise around the throne forever and ever evermore i will love you evermore i will serve you evermore i will glorify the name of the lord evermore i'll adore you evermore i'll bow before you I will bless your name forevermore. Evermore I will love you. Evermore I will serve you. Evermore I will praise you. Evermore I will raise you. Evermore I'll adore you. Evermore I'll bow before you. I will bless your name forevermore. I will bless your name forevermore. I will bless your name forevermore. Bless your name, bless your name forever, forevermore. Great song, forevermore. You know, forevermore we need to praise Him and worship Him. Jesus Christ is worthy of all praise. We have with us tonight Reverend Michael Hodge. And Michael, you are a pastor and you're also a runner. I'm right. So you know how to run with endurance. Right. And you're going to talk with us about that tonight on two different levels, I think. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate the invitation to come once again. It's always a, just a great time to be able to share the word and to worship together. And so when you invited me, I began to just pray through what the Lord would lay on my heart. And this was the theme that just kept coming to me, Hebrews 12, and this call to run with endurance. So uh, I want to share from that, going to pull some insights from that. First, I love that we're getting to be here with Doug and Kim Allen. We get to hear him sing through the worship ministry of our church. Grateful for his ministry and how he serves so faithfully. Uh, we've been at Locust Hill for just over a year, 15 months now. Yeah. And so God's really using the ministry from our children's ministry that continues to grow, student ministry, adults. And so we're grateful for how God is using all of the different ministries. We call it a multi-generational impact, and that's our prayer. Yeah. And so as we think about just this text, I want to read just the first verse here, Hebrews 12.1. It says, Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So as I think about this just call to run with endurance, I think more than anything we realize in 2023, it is hard to run that race with endurance. Yeah. We've been very fortunate, very blessed to live in an area of the world where uh, Christianity has so impacted the culture of the upstate of South Carolina. Increasingly, it's becoming less and less that folks are standing tall for Christ. So this call to run with endurance, I think, is really something we need to take to heart more than anything. And so as we think about this theme of running, like you said, I'm going to pull in both sides of it, the physical side of running and then tie in just as Hebrews 12 says running. So let's back up a little bit. Just a number of years ago, not too long ago, 2016, I just had a, a conviction from some friends that, you know what, you need to get healthy. I've been very fortunate. I've never had a problem with weight, but sometimes you look at somebody like myself that weight was not a problem, 
but I was not in shape. And so I said, all right, I'm going to start going to the gym. Started going to the gym and was faithfully going to the gym. Got bored with that pretty quick and said, mm -hmm. you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to sign up for a 5K race. Now, kids do this. Adults do this all the time. But for some reason, I was just convinced I can't do that. Yeah. So I said, I'm signing up. I'm going to do this race. And I've always been, a, you know, in good health, but I will say I wasn't a great athlete. In fact, I'm grateful that church basketball teams don't cut you from the team because they probably would have cut me after the first practice. Just wasn't a great athlete. And so I had this perception, you know what, ah, that's not for me. But I signed up for my first 5K. I said, all right, I'm going to do this. And I was training, and I was training on the treadmill in the gym. Well, I didn't know at the time, that's not always the best place to train for a road race mm. because that treadmill stays the same all the time. It, you know, you can increase the inclination a little bit, but out on the road, it's changing all the time. So I said, all right, I'm going to sign up for this race. And I remember the very first 5K that I ran. I was 41 years old, first time I ever had run a road race. And I got to the about a mile and a half point and I pulled out my phone and I called my wife. I said, something's wrong. She said, what's going on? I said, I can't find the finish line. This is awful. And I said, I don't know what's going on. I thought I signed up for a 5k, 3.1 miles. And I said, this has to be a 10k. It may be a half marathon. I'm not sure. I can't find the finish line. I got to the, the finish of it. And I told some friends, I said, you know what? I'm done. Running is not for me. I quit. I give up. Oh, wow. So I said, well, maybe I, I'll give it one more try. So I said, all right, let me, let me sign up for one more. I'll, I'll just do one more. All right, so maybe I'll do one, just one more. Okay, maybe maybe one more. Or just maybe, maybe just a few more. Maybe a few more. I, I could go through all of these. You know how many I've run up to this point? Yeah. Not just 5Ks, but more than that, 55 of them at this point. Oh, wow. So the, the list goes on and on <laughs> here. So these are just some of the bibs from races I've run. So, But one of the ones that, that really means a lot to me are these two right here. So the first one was 2019. I went from 5K, a few months later, I said, I'm gonna run a 10K. Mm -hmm. About eight months later, I said, let's run a half marathon. And then I had a crazy yeah. thought, I thought, I'm gonna do a marathon. Now, I'm not gonna say it was pretty. I'm glad there's not a camera that recorded how it looked. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but this was a big deal to me because in October 26, 2019, first marathon. And I said, well, that was horrible. That was the most painful thing I've ever done, never doing that again. So two years later, when I ran the second one, <laughs> I said, all right, two marathons. Well, you know, that's just a reminder that here's something that I thought couldn't be done. Yeah. Not going to try it. And when I look at the text here, I see this call very clearly. It says, run with endurance. So I'm going to read on beyond that. It says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our mm -hmm. faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, when I look at this text here for the context of Hebrews, they had this image of the Olympics, runners. In that context, I look back, I'm not a history buff, but I look back at the history of the Olympics. 776 B.C. to 393 A.D. was the first run until the modern Olympics that we know. So in the context of the writer of Hebrews putting out this image of run with endurance, they would have known that image, run mm -hmm. with endurance. They would have pictured the, the stadiums, you know, cheering on yeah. as those athletes were competing. But you know what I also see, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, I also see fans surrounding here because in Hebrews 12 it says, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So that tells me we're not alone when we run this race. And I thought just a few things that would tie in with running, physical race, and I certainly want to give that challenge to folks, get healthy physically, but obviously that's not what my ministry is about. It's about <laughs> spiritually. I want yeah. to see people get healthy spiritually. Yeah. So what are some tie-ins? Number one, you got to start. You got to begin. You know, I had all kinds of excuses. I could pile up excuse after excuse. I don't want to do it. Nobody enjoys running. If you've seen people run, it just looks painful. Why do you want to do that? I've heard all that everybody <laughs> says, if you see me running, you better run fast because something's chasing me. Yeah. So I, yeah. I used all the excuses. But you know what? We can do the same thing spiritually. I'm not starting the race and I got this excuse or that excuse. And so when we think about just beginning the race, 
for folks at home, my prayer is that you've begun the race of faith. And the Bible is very clear, uh, even in Hebrews, how do we do that? Hebrews 9 says all this language of the sacrificial system that Jesus is that high priest. When you look over at 1 Timothy 2, 5, the words that we get there says there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So how do I start the race? It's only by Jesus. Yeah. And my prayer is that folks at home, as they think about this idea of running the race with endurance, you see the reality is the first step is I got to start. And that's by trusting in Jesus Christ that he offers that gift of eternal life to us if we will confess our sins. He is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can call on the name of Jesus. So we got to just start the race. So for me, I was 41. I had to start somewhere, and I just said, I'm going to do this. Went out and ran that first race. Then I said, all right, I'm going to do it another one, another race. Well, I had to start somewhere, begin the race. But then the second part that is so key for all of our folks at home that are already believers, you got to train. You got to train for the race. Mm -hmm. What does it say there? It says, run with endurance. Endurance means I'm running up against some testing, some hardship. Yeah. I got to push through that. And if you go down a few verses in Hebrews 12, 11, it says, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. And if you've ever tried to go to the gym, ever tried to do anything, you've experienced that, but spiritually also, but later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So if we want to see fruit in our lives, we've got to train. We've got to commit ourselves to the Word. And so when I look at Hebrews 12 and I say, just Lord, give me the training plan. What does it say here in verse 1? It says, lay aside every weight. Mm -hmm. So there's some things that I'm going to have to put aside. There's uh, there's some weights that I got to put aside. If you want to run a lot, you just got to get rid of some weight because that holds you back. You know what's one of the most discouraging things you can see when you're running? And this happened to me just a few weeks ago. I was on a 10K race and we were going through Greenville Tech and it was getting kind of an inclined section. And I said, all right, I'm going to push through. But I finally said, I'm going to have to walk for a little bit. Started walking. And you know what passed me? A guy with a stroller. Now, let me tell you how insulting that is. I'm running and I'm worn out and I, I got a guy with a stroller. He's pushing on. I wanted to get rid of every weight and he's pushing through with it. Well, when I think of running, I don't want to add a stroller. I don't want to add anything else. I want to get rid of everything. And yet here the training plan says, you know what? I got to lay aside some things. And there are things in my life and we would ask, do I need to get rid of this or that? The question is, is it leading you closer to Jesus or not? Yeah. If it's not leading you closer to Jesus, lay it aside. Mm -hmm. So we got to train. So we think running with endurance, I got to train. And then the next thing that we see here, what does it tell us in the verse? It says, run with endurance, the race that is set before us, doing what? Looking to Jesus. Yeah. We got to fix our eyes on Jesus. One of the worst things we can do when we are out running on the trail or running on the road is having your eyes straight down. The miles just don't seem to pass. But if you get your eyes up, what you find out is it picks up your pace. Well, and the yeah. same is true in our spiritual lives. i got to get my eyes on Jesus. If I look down, what I see, I see myself and I see discouragement. I see, you know, just where I've missed the mark. Yeah. But when I get my eyes up, I see Jesus looking to Jesus, the founder, the perfecter of our faith. Mm. In 1 Timothy 4, it says this. It says, train yourself for godliness. So I got to train if I'm going to experience the fruit of the Spirit showing up in my life each and every day, it's training. And so the question as we think about Christianity without training is, am I really enjoying God? Because if I'm training, I enjoy Him. Mm -hmm. He's refining me. He's shaping my life. And so I'm experiencing that. And so as I think about just in the enjoyment of running. Believe it or not, you can get to that point of enjoying it, <laughs> but it takes training. You say, yeah. I'm never going to go out to a half marathon, a marathon, having not trained and say, I'm yeah. going to enjoy that race. It's my training that leads to the joy. And so as we think about the text here, and we'll come back in just a little while and talk more from Hebrews 12, but the key is begin the race. And for folks at home, if they haven't begun the race, Tonight, as you shared from your scripture passage, mm -hmm. this can be that day of salvation. Yes, God is patient. He wants to redeem. He wants to save. 
And so begin the race, but then my prayer, and we'll talk about this more in just a little while, what does it look like then for us to train? We need to be constantly growing, training, putting aside those things mm -hmm. that hold us back, mm -hmm. fixing our eyes on Jesus. So what a powerful reminder for us from a physical standpoint, but in our faith. So. There's a, you know, as we walk in the Christian walk, once we have started this race, right. and we walk in the Christian walk, we gain strength Absolutely. as we go. I know surely the more races you run and the training that went before them causes you to be stronger. Right. And it's the same way. It's the same way. Yeah. And you were talking about laying aside the weights. You know, sometimes people think, oh, well, you know, I don't really have any sins that I need to, but what about the weights in our lives? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily just say sin, it says weights. Right. And these weights weigh us down. And so it might be something that is really, there's nothing wrong with it. But like you said, if it's coming between us and the Lord, if it's coming between us and being able to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, we need to lay it aside. Amen. Amen. There are times God calls us to something and we start doing it, and we need to be doing that, but there are times that he says, lay it aside. Right, yeah, and as we do that, when we come back in just a moment, we'll talk about what does it look like then running that race. So, yeah. you know, getting in the race and just experiencing the result of all that training, mm -hmm. and that's what we have the opportunity to do as we gather together with our church family. When we have that commitment, I'm going to gather together, and we'll talk about this mm -hmm. more in a moment. We're training, we're, we're growing, and like you say, as I train a little bit, as I do one race, that next mm -hmm. one's a little easier. The yeah. next one's a little easier because I put in the time. And a little longer. It's a little you longer. Get to go a little just, longer. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have another song right now from Doug Allen. He was nailed to the cross for me. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. He was nailed to the cross for me. He was bruised and battered so that I could go free. I've never known such a love like that on Calvary when he was nailed to the cross for me yes he was nailed to the cross for me he was bruised and battered so that I could go free I've never known such a love like that on Calvary when he was nailed to the cross for me yes he was nailed to the cross for me he was bruised and battered so that i could go free i've never known such a love like that on calvary when he was nailed to the cross for me, yes, he was nailed to the cross for you and for me. He was bruised and battered so that we could go free. I've never known such a love 
like that on Calvary when he was nailed to the cross for me and I'd never known such a love like that on Calvary when he was nailed to the cross for me when he was nailed to the cross for me Beautiful, meaningful song. Thank you so much, Doug. We're so blessed to have you with us tonight. You know, Jesus was nailed to the cross for you and for me and for all of us here tonight. He was nailed to the cross for us. And if you don't know him, please give your heart to him. Begin the race. Give your life to him tonight. It's as simple as that. Amen. Say, Jesus, forgive me Amen. of all my sins wash me, cleanse me, and surrender your life to him. And he can change you in an instant because he loves you. That's right. Well, we have Reverend Michael Hodge with us, and you are talking about running the race. And there I'm just going to let you pick up where we left off. Right. So we're looking at Hebrews 12 and this image that's so very clear from the writer of Hebrews calling us to run with endurance the race we've talked about. You got to begin. You got to begin that race. And our prayer, like you just said, is that someone would begin that race tonight, that they would trust in Christ as their Savior. Then we talked about training. And a lot of folks, they want to claim that gift of eternal life, but they don't recognize that Jesus called people to follow him. Mm -hmm. That's daily abiding in him. And so we talked about training. And here I just want us to look then at this call, run with endurance. So the third part, you got to show up and run the race. Okay. So you can begin your training. You can go through the training, but eventually you just got to show up on race day. And here it says, mm -hmm. let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I got to run the race. And as we talked about at the end of the last segment, we are so very fortunate. If you are involved in a church, then you've got opportunities to train. You can run alongside others. Yeah. And my prayer is that folks at home are taking advantage of so many wonderful Bible teaching churches that are available all across the upstate and we can grow. And so when we think about just that consistent training to run the race, yeah, I, I think it mirrors running very well. There are days when I go out training and I get on the trail and I run and I'm hearing chariots of fire. I mean, it's going. It's like, man, this is a great day. And there are other days where it's like, this is not a good day. I don't feel it today. But you know what I do? I just keep on. Just keep, keep training. Keep training. There are times when we go to church and we say, this was revival day. It stirred us today. Yeah. And there are Sundays where you say, I'm just going to keep going because I'm committed, regardless of whether it was, you know, zeal and excitement mm -hmm. or it was just a, maybe a difficult day. We keep training. We keep going. Run the race. And what I love about the invitation to run the race is, you see, I can say I'm a runner and I can watch YouTube videos on running. I can get Runner's World magazine. I can get friends around me that love talking about running. But am I a runner? No, not until I get out there and do it. See, Absolutely. we can talk the lingo of Christianity, mm -hmm. but we got to run that race. And that's every day saying, I'm going to allow Christ to shape my life. Yeah. I don't want to just talk about it. I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it is we're around other people. Uh, some of those longer races, and I'll pull out, this was the very first marathon that I ran. Got the medal from it, and it's not because I finished it fast. Fortunately, they had not stopped giving out medals by the time I came across, so I was glad. <laughs> uh, I eventually got there. But this race means something to me because it was the first one. Yeah. And one thing about those races is they have folks that are pacers. 
So they carry a stick with a number on it. And based on what you want to finish, you look for that flag to say, that's the person that I want to run near because that's the time that I'm aiming for. And so for the mm -hmm. entire length of the marathon, they'll switch off different pacers, but they have that marker for you. As long as you stay with that marker, you'll hit your goal of finishing that marathon on time. You know, when I look at Hebrews 11, what I see is pacers. I look at the hall of faith, you know, all of these names that, that stand out here. We see Enoch, whose life pleased God. We see Noah, obedient to God to do the unthinkable, building a boat, and you know, he was mocked for that. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out, not knowing even where he was going. I look at Moses in Hebrews 11, and he chose to be mistreated, as Scripture says, with the people of God, rather than stay in that that palace, that place of peace, he chose to be mistreated. And so we see those pacers, but it isn't just those Hebrews 11, it's folks around me in my church that I get mm -hmm. to walk along with them. And I see how God is at work in their life and they help yeah. pace me. I see when we're in a men's prayer group and I hear how God is at work in, in their life and I say, that helps pace me. I hear that text, how it impacted your life, and I'm listening, and so I'm pacing myself. And so yeah. I think of running, I think, you know, it, it's so important to just, you know, just to pace yourself. You know, as I shared, training is not always pretty. Uh, <laughs> just this past weekend, uh, I went out running. Fortunately, my wife joined me on her bike, and she rode behind me. And uh, at about mile 11 of this training, I don't know what happened, but I hit the wall and I could not get any further. The, I had to run another four miles to get back home. It was a 15 mile run mm. and those last four miles were brutal, but I had no other option because the only way get, to get back home was to keep walking, jogging, walking, jogging, pressing on. Yeah. You know, that's just logging miles. And when it comes to our daily walk with him, it's logging miles. It's saying, you know what, this morning I'm going to get up and I'm going to get in the word. I may not feel great. It may not be a glorious day the way I feel, but I'm logging miles. I'm just spending time in the Word. That's running with endurance. And so I would say, you know what, when you think of, of churches, churches are filled with imperfect people and mm -hmm. it's imperfect churches. We realize that. Right. And there may be those at home that they've been hurt in a church and they said, mm -mm, I, I'm not going back. Folks, it's logging miles. It's days when it's hard, and maybe you were in a, a church situation where it was difficult, but today is the opportunity to say, you know what, I need to get back in the race. Yeah. I need to get back, and I need to worship alongside those that will help pace me in my walk with the Lord. And so we see those examples here in Hebrews 11. And so R.C. Sproul says this about the Christian life. He said, the Christian life is a marathon. It is a race that must be run with endurance. By ourselves, we would never make it, but thanks be to God, He holds us up and gives the church to us as a cheering section. Yeah. I love that because yes. there are probably folks at home that are walking through some difficult times. Maybe they're walking through a diagnosis of cancer or maybe they're, they're grieving the loss of a loved one and they need a cheering section right now saying, I'm here, yeah. I'm cheering you on, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. Keep running the race. Run with endurance. And so I would say you just got to run the race when it comes down to it. I can tell you there have been so many mornings with all of these bibs that I showed you that it was a cold morning. It was rainy. And I said, oh. mm -mm, not doing it. I don't want to go. <laughs> but I'd already signed up. I was committed. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. And that's the call we have. Run the race. But then I want to tie in with this. As we think about running, there are times you just have to recover from the race. You see, if you go and you run a marathon and the next day you say, all right, let's do it again. Let's do it again tomorrow. There are super athletes that can do that. Most folks don't need to do that. You need to recover. And there may have been hardship that folks have walked through at home. They've been running the race. And like I said, maybe they've been hurt. Maybe they came up against a challenge in their life and, and they said, you know what, I, I, I can't do it. I, I'm going to give up. I, I don't know, but I, I love the picture in verse 7. It talks about for discipline you endure. And then verse 12 says, lift up your, your hands. It was, it's the picture yeah. of your arms are hanging low. Yeah. And if you walk with Christ for very long, there are times you feel like your arms are just dragging. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying. I'm striving to walk with Jesus faithfully. <laughs> 
but this is tough. I'm walking through a hard mm -hmm. time. And so there's the call here just to, to be faithful. And I love in chapter 10 of Hebrews, we're in chapter 12, but this very clear word, it says this, let us consider how to stir one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Sometimes the recovery we need is just that voice of encouragement from someone around us. Yeah. And if you're a believer at home and the Holy Spirit is leading you to encourage someone tonight, do it. Just reach out to that mm -hmm. person. I think the Holy Spirit burdens us with what someone else is going through and we need to just yeah. take that opportunity, encourage them. I can't tell you how many races that I've been a part of and there are those folks along the race, along the route, and they're clapping and they're screaming <laughs> or they've got a whistle or a bell. Yeah. And for whatever reason, it just kind of gives you that boost. Yeah. All right, I got this, stay in the race. My mm -hmm. wife has been faithful when I've done the marathons to literally move along the route. So we would go about five miles and she would move the car and go up to the next <laughs> about five miles and meet me. And just knowing that I was gonna meet her along the way mm -hmm. is that encouragement, keep going. She's gonna yeah. give me something, some, some more water, a snack, whatever <laughs> I can do. And that's the call here. It says, consider how to stir one another up to love. Mm -hmm. So much of our faith we talk about, it's personal, yeah. but it's not just personal, it's communal. It it's is. a community of fellow believers. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the joys of running. I, I've seen a sign many times people hold up along the route that says, remember, you paid to do this. <laughs> you know, people can't understand it. Why are you doing it? Why did you pay to do this? But you know what helps you as you paid to do that is you got all these folks around you running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the camaraderie of that, just the joy of you find folks yeah. that kind of pace kind of with you. You have the guys that are super skinny and they're half my age at the front. You just let them go on. They're <laughs> going to set a pace I never could compete with. And you kind of find your people. All right, these folks are pacing with me. I'm going to stick with them. And yeah. I think about just in my walk with the Lord, that call, let us consider how to stir one another up to love yeah. and good works. How do I encourage someone? You know, I've come home from a race or a training and I say, that was awful. That was a bad race. I didn't hit the mark that I wanted to in training. I didn't achieve the time goal that I had set. And I can go home and just say, I give up. I quit. You know, I'm getting older. I need to, to hang this up. But after a day or so, I kind of say, you know what? Get back at it. Yeah. And there are some folks maybe that are, are sitting at home and maybe even from COVID, they were forced to go home. And maybe for health reasons, they needed to stay home but maybe now they can go back. And it's time for them to say, you know what? It's time to recover. It's time to go back. But also, as I think about that idea of hurt, unfortunately, I've served in church ministry all of my adult life and I've seen folks get hurt and I've seen folks hurt others. And if we don't show forgiveness and grace, then I don't know that we can make it. So when we think about the body coming together, there are times when we need to say, you know what, part of my recovery is me just saying, I forgive and I need to come back and show grace. Yeah. I need to gather with fellow believers once again because I need them. Yes. They need me to be present. That's mm -hmm. part of this training, just running the race. So as we think about this picture here, Hebrews 12, I love the call here to run with endurance. There are a lot of folks at home, they're saying, I have no idea what you're talking about with running physically, but I pray they know spiritually what it means to run. Yeah. And there are no doubt some folks that are watching at home that are what I call senior saints. They've been running the race a long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for the example of what we call senior saints who decade after decade, they've set an example for me and for a younger generation. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like to run with endurance. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like in your 80s and even 90s to faithfully walk with Jesus. We need those young adults to set that example, but praise God for those senior adults that have been so key in my life, yeah. and they certainly are active in our church, of uh, just faithfully walking with the Lord. Yeah, it means a lot. You know, God puts people in our lives right. for a reason, and and we have been studying, I've been teaching on the on the body of Christ in our Bible study, and it's incredible. Every member is needed. And Absolutely. some people feel like, 
Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm there or not. It doesn't matter about me, but it does. Right. Every member is important. Even those that seem, the scripture says, the most feeble or the most right. dishonorable. But we are all necessary. We all need somebody. Yep. And somebody needs us. Right. And I like what you said when you said, if, if God is speaking to your heart to, to call somebody Absolutely. or to make some kind of contact with somebody, do it. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart and say, you need to just say a word to this Absolutely. person. And it can make a world of difference. Yeah, you never know how you, just you running your race faithfully for so many years how that's going to impact someone else and yeah. so take advantage of that opportunity to to be the witness be that encouragement that god just burdens you to be so, yeah 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 and i think that as we begin to learn that and as we begin to pace ourselves even with other people as right. you were saying and we can learn and grow together absolutely as one yeah. We're going to have another song right now from Doug Allen. Pass me not, O gentle Savior.
Thank you, Doug. Thanks so much. We do not want the Savior to pass us by. Yeah. We want him to be walking with us, and we want to walk with him. I want to just say something right quick. I, I know we've got some prayer requests here, too. But I met a gentleman today who is one of our viewers, and it's, it's always exciting to actually meet you because we don't see you, obviously, while we're sitting here. But it was so good to see James today. And uh, I just want to say thanks, James, for coming and talking to me. It was just so good to meet you. And so we do have prayer requests here Amen. that we need yeah. to be praying over. But um, here's one that's praying. They want God's will in their life, and they want their family to get back in church. Um, and here's some who have, this lady has cancer, and she's asking for prayer. And here's another that needs healing in their body. And here's one, too, who, um, who needs deliverance. God can deliver. God can heal. God can raise people up out of sick beds. God can do those things. And I know you've got some. Amen. Here's here. one, uh, just an unspoken request. You know, we, we, there's a lot of us who have unspoken needs. Um, maybe you don't want to speak them, but you also say God knows. Yes, he does, but you need to let your brothers and sisters uphold you because there's power in prayer. Absolutely. Not just unspoken, but the spoken ones. Uh, here's a man who's he's lost a lot of weight. He's, he's not eating. He's not drinking. He's, and, he, and he needs prayer. He's got heart problems. And another one with stomach problems and back problems needs healing. Um... One with feet and leg problems, got bad, bad neck problems too. So the list just keeps going on and on because we're every Tuesday we're here and we get these requests. God sees them, He knows them, and we love to pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands upon these requests now in Jesus' name. Let your Holy Spirit flow. God, in work in every heart, every need, God, that they would feel the presence of your Holy Spirit upon them and them and doing your mighty work, God, because you want to do more even abundantly and above what we even ask or think. God, that's your word. And Lord, we pray your word, but it's by your stripes we were healed. So, Father God, we thank you, God, that we can come here and that we can pray in the name of Jesus, the prayer of faith, Lord, save the sick, Lord. Heal those, restore those, minister to every need, Father, and let them feel the presence of your Holy Spirit power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Tonight... You may say, well, I feel like maybe Jesus has just passed me by. He hasn't. Jesus has not passed you by. Amen. And sometimes I think we just really need to decide, like, like uh, the pastor was talking just a few minutes ago, and just say, you know, I'm going to get in this race, or I'm going to get back into this race, and say, I know Jesus has not passed me by. If you're still living, okay, he hasn't passed you by. He, he can still do a work in your life. And so I'm just asking you tonight, if you don't know Jesus Christ or if you've turned your back on him, I'm asking you, come back. Come to Jesus Christ and he'll receive you. Yes. He is passing by your way right now because he's giving you an opportunity. And it's our prayer that you'll find the joy and the new life in Jesus Christ that you can have just by asking and surrendering your life to Him. So if you will tonight, don't let this evening go by without you saying, I want Jesus in my life. I want Him in my life. I want to live my life according to Jesus Christ because He wants to come and you can walk with Him. If you need somebody to pace you, Jesus can do it. He can do it. He walks with us. 
If he didn't walk with me every day, I don't know where I would be. I really don't. But just give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to thank our guests tonight, um, Michael Hodge, Doug Allen. Thanks so much, both of you, for being with us tonight. You've made it a great evening and Amen. been a blessing. Amen. And thank you, all of you who have been watching tonight. And I hope that you have just received something from the body of Christ tonight because that's how it works. As we give, somebody else receives. And sometimes we're on the receiving end. So tonight, I hope you have been blessed. And I hope that your life and your walk with Jesus Christ has been strengthened and that you will certainly walk with Him every day of your life. We love you here at Nightline. We love you and pray that God would bless you all the time.